Good evening, uh, friends. Uh, we are reflecting upon Lot and his family from uh, Genesis 19, and tonight we come to the end. And Lot, who started out with Abraham, wealthy, uh, uh, so wealthy, so many possessions that he had to leave uh, uh, the company of Abraham so that there wouldn't be uh, uh, a conflict between all the livestock and everything. And now he has lost everything. He has run for his life. He is in this little town of Zoar. His wife has turned to a pillar of salt. And even though he was a righteous man, a man of faith, he has compromised with the world. And we see how that compromise has not only led him into difficult decisions, but have led to disaster in his life. And the question is, how will he end? Will he end up reunited with Abraham, return? Or will he live as a broken man, righteous but broken? Saved, as Paul says, as it were, uh, by uh, uh, the narrows of margins. He, he talks about that in First Corinthians uh, uh, 3, being everything burned away by fire and yet saved because he had, did not build with materials that will last. Uh, let's read uh, these last few verses. And they are uh, quite distasteful. And yet we see how Scripture do not hide any of our sin and folly. This is God's word. Genesis 19 verse 30. Now Lot went up out of Zoar and lived in the hills with his two daughters. For he was afraid to live in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, and we will preserve offspring for our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know that she lay down or when she rose. The next day the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him that we may preserve offspring for our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and, lie and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down and when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The firstborn, a son, uh, the firstborn, bore a son and called him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites, uh, Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites to this day. Moab means from father and Ben-Ami, son of my people. Now, um, quite a shocking story. Now we can understand why Lot was nervous to live in this little city because right after he fled, the whole place is destroyed. Just imagine what kind of suspicion he was viewed and looked at in the city. He was no longer comfortable there. Even though he asked to stay there, even though he wanted to remain in the city life, he could no longer. He felt not safe. 
And so he took his two daughters and he ended up, instead of going to the hills where Abraham was, and he went into another place. And he ended up in a cave. No longer, no longer living in luxury. He has lost everything. And his daughters, who lost their fiancés, their betrothed in the destruction, remember they were the ones that laughed when Lot came to warn them, and now they desire children. Now that's a great, that is a good desire. But they scheme to produce children and to keep the family name going in their own way. They devise this plan to uh, uh, drug their father to be able to produce children through their father. A moment of a great perverseness. The two sons that are born, Moab and Benami, the father of the Moabites and the Ammonites, became great enemies of Israel. And remember, we encountered both these, these nations uh, when we looked at the story of Balaam. And uh, uh, it was the Moabites who hired Balaam uh, to curse the Israelites. And that's why um, we have that uh, warning in Genesis, uh, in Deuteronomy 23. Uh, we read these words from the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the ten generations, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, from Pathor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. You shall not seek peace, their peace and their prosperity all your days forever. These nations became a thorn in the flesh of Israel. The Moabites uh, who worshipped their fertility god Baal uh, seduced the Israelites by the orgies, and so brought God's judgment upon themselves. The Ammonites were, were people of war, known for their ferocity. Even their religion was bloody. They worshipped Moloch, the God to whom you sacrificed your children. And the Israelites in Leviticus 18 were forbidden to sacrifice their children to Moloch, to follow the gods of these pagan nations. And that's why God promised to bring judgment on these nations. We read in Amos uh, chapter 1, uh, both uh, God's judgment on the Ammonites in uh, verse 13 following, and in the beginning of chapter 2, God's judgment against Moab. And remember that verse that we read not too long ago, where the Lord declares that Moab shall become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah. God will bring judgment upon these nations. They, through their, in their very character, worked uh, the reality of self-salvation. These daughters of a lot sought to bring salvation through their own efforts, through their own means, so that their family is preserved. 
And yet, God's grace is able to even save the Moabites and one of the Moabites in particular. We come in uh, uh, the story of Ruth. We encounter the power of God's grace. Ruth was a Moabitess. And we remember how this family fled to find life for themselves in Moab. Moab, who stands for self-salvation, that's what this family won, but what they found is death. And yet Ruth found the Lord. And she returns to the, with Naomi. And we have that beautiful confession from Ruth in chapter 1. When Naomi urged her to turn away, she says, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me. And also, if anything but death parts you and me, I am committed to the Lord and to the Lord's people. Here is a Moabites who became a true Israelite. And the beauty of it is that she became the mother of David's father. She became the mother of Obed, or David's grandfather, I should say. Obed, who fathered Jesse, and Jesse, who fathered David. And in that, she becomes, too, included in Jesus' line. So that in Matthew 1, we read that she becomes one of those four women who gets a special mention out of the Old Testament, who are now part of Jesus' story. In verse 5, we read that Boaz fathered Obed by Ruth. And Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David the king. And this is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus, the son of David. David, the son of Jesse. Jesse, the son of Obed. Obed, the son of Boaz, Boaz by Ruth. Ruth. The Moabites is now part of Jesus' story. Isn't that incredible? It shows us the power of God's grace. That even though this people have their origin in sin, Christ can wipe that sin clean. No matter what your past is, no matter what your family history is, the curse of sin is not how more powerful than the grace that is in Jesus Christ. He wipes that past away and gives us a new future. Look to Christ and you will know in him a savior who is truly able to save to the utmost. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that even here as we see sin and wickedness and the origin of this nations and the judgment to come, we see your grace also. May we, O oh Lord, look to Christ and truly find in him the Savior we need. We pray this in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.